Death and destruction are common outcomes of volcanic eruptions. These eruptions produce extremely hot lava, engulfing communities and crops and wreaking havoc. Volcanic ash produced can cause respiratory difficulties as well as impediments to air transport. Large volcanoes have the potential to wipe out entire animal and human populations as well as cause trillions of dollars of economic damage. Who knows what would happen to humanity if the world's supervolcanoes all decided to erupt at once? Would there be hope for our survival now that these beasts are starting to wake up from their slumber? Join us as we take a look at the world's largest volcanoes and our chances of surviving them. The constant reawakening of Mauna Loa's volcano has garnered recent media attention and the volcano's activity should not be ignored. Mauna Loa is the world's largest active volcano, rising gradually to a height of 4,170 meters, that's 13,681 feet. Its broad undersea flanks drop five kilometers or three miles below sea level to the ocean floor. The massive volcano spans half of the island of Hawaii and accounts for nearly 85% of all the other Hawaiian islands put together. Imagine what it's like to have your home in the shadow of the largest, most active volcano on the planet. People living on Hawaii's Big Island know about the long-standing threat lurking inside Mauna Loa Volcano. In addition to being more than a thousand feet taller from the bottom to the top than Mount Everest, Mauna Loa seems ready for eruption. Scientists estimate that the chances of Mauna Loa erupting again are around 100%, with potentially catastrophic effects. Only Hawaii's Kalawi and Luihi volcanoes have been erupting on a consistent basis for decades. However, Mauna Loa is viewed as the major threat. What Mauna Loa erupts in just 20 minutes would take a day for Kalawi to do the same as it did back in 1984. More than 35,000 people lived in Hilo in 1881 when it came within an inch of destroying the city. The fishing community of Hoopalua was completely destroyed in 1926 by its fast-moving 50-foot-high torrent. Homes in Pahuihui were covered in lava in 1950. Residents were forced to flee for their lives. 18 years ago, scientists came dangerously close to issuing an alert. An earthquake swarm deep beneath Mauna Loa indicated that new lava was flowing into the magma chamber. However, before the molten rock could reach the surface, half of the mountain migrated south, making more room for the new lava, and the eruption never occurred. However, the chamber still contains all of the excess lava. Is this a sign that we'll have a bigger eruption? There's a chance it would. Mauna Loa has erupted 39 times since 1832, on average every six years. Mauna Loa hasn't erupted since 1984, and geologists estimate there is a 100% probability it will. One of the deadliest aspects of this uncertainty is that researchers don't know where the next eruption will occur, making it difficult to plan for both time and hazard zones. Massive, fast-moving lava flows are common during Mauna Loa eruptions, and they can have significant effects on the island's east and west flanks. It is also worth mentioning that the Yellowstone supervolcano has erupted three times in the past 2.1 million years, with the most recent eruption occurring 640,000 years ago. An eruption at Yellowstone would be unlike anything humanity has ever encountered. The first warning that magma beneath Yellowstone was racing toward the surface would be increasingly powerful earthquakes. Then magma would erupt from beneath the surface, releasing the Earth's deadly core into the atmosphere. A 40-mile radius around Yellowstone would be completely engulfed in lava if it continued for days. If the Yellowstone super eruption occurs, large Colorado, Wyoming and Utah regions might be buried under three feet of deadly volcanic ash. Much of the Midwest might get a few inches of the ash, putting the area under a blanket of darkness. As the ash cloud spreads, even the coasts where most Americans reside are expected to be hit. It would decimate crops and pollute pastureland. 
in the event that power cables and electrical transformers are destroyed, the entire grid might be rendered inoperable. This is only the United States of America by way of comparison. Based on computer simulations, the aerosols emitted by a summertime eruption have the potential to spread around the globe. Temperatures around the world could drop precipitously. In the short term, due to the poisonous cloud blocking sunlight, it may not return to normal for several years. Rainfall would be drastically reduced and tropical rainforests may go out as a result of this. The Midwest could be the first region to see a collapse in farming. Ultra catastrophes like Yellowstone supervolcano could lead to global devastation and even human extinction if they erupt. These are known as existential risks. Super eruptions and asteroid impacts on the scale that helps wipe out dinosaurs are examples of natural catastrophes. However, they can also be man-made, such as nuclear war or an engineered virus. Because of this, they are incomparably more horrific than anything the human race has ever encountered. However, this is not the same as being high. Every year there is a 1 in 730,000 chance of a super eruption at Yellowstone. It's important to remember that Yellowstone and Mauna Loa aren't the only active supervolcanoes in the world. Scientists have discovered evidence of at least 47 similar eruptions throughout Earth's history. The most recent was in Lake Taupo in New Zealand 26,000 years ago. Even though asteroids attract the most attention, existential risk specialists agree that supervolcanoes constitute the greatest threat to human survival. That raises the question of what would happen if all of the world's supervolcanoes erupted simultaneously. There are approximately 12 supervolcanoes on Earth, each at least seven times the size of Mount Tambora, which erupted in the largest eruption ever recorded. In the event of a supervolcano eruption, thousands of tons of volcanic ash and hazardous gases would likely be released into the sky at once. Acid rain from the gas would devastate agriculture and cause global famine if it were to return to Earth. An estimated 92,000 people were killed when Mount Tambora erupted in Indonesia in 1815. It was the largest known eruption. Despite this, Tambora measured just one-seventh as big as the smallest supervolcano. There are about a dozen of these monsters on the planet, the most recent of which erupted 26,500 years ago in New Zealand, blanketing the entire island in thick ash. Nearly every continent has at least one supervolcano, making it difficult to find a safe haven if they all erupt at once. Yellowstone National Park in the United States, Ngorongoro Crater in Tanzania, and Toba in Indonesia are just a few examples. In other words, you're out of luck no matter where you are. At the very least, you'll know about it since the ground will tremble for weeks or months beforehand. Therefore, it would be obvious that something was amiss when Earth shook on doomsday. If you survive the first round of disaster, you'll have to deal with the second wave of calamity. A fallout shelter is in order since these super eruptions release billions of tons of ash, volcanic glass and rock that travel thousands of feet into the sky. Inhalation or proximity to this expanding ash cloud, which moves at the speed of a fighter aircraft across the countryside, is not recommended. Buildings would fall and water sources would be contaminated as a result of this. As a result, any cities located near a supervolcano would be wiped out instantly. The same fate awaits planes that would attempt to fly people away from the danger zone. As a reminder, ash spreads. Winds carried ash from Toba's 74,000-year-old eruption all the way to India, while debris from an all-out supervolcano eruption would be dispersed across the world. As soon as the eruption is over, the devastation will only have just begun. Global temperatures might fall as much as 15 degrees Celsius within six months due to ash from that supervolcanic eruption that would cling to the stratosphere and obscure sunlight.
That's about the difference between July in Rio de Janeiro and winter in Anchorage, Alaska. Mount Tambora's little eruption alone triggered the year without a summer, which saw freezing temperatures and blizzards sweeping throughout most of the Northern Hemisphere months after the eruption. A global volcanic winter will last for the next few years if the 12 or so supervolcanoes that are currently erupting continue to spew thick black dust. Tropical woods, which are unable to withstand cold temperatures, will die out, resulting in the extinction of millions of species of animals. And things are just going to get worse from here. You've heard the expression, out of the frying pan into the fire before. In addition to ash, those volcanoes also spew poisonous gases into the sky, such as sulfur dioxide. When the winter finally ends after a few years, these gases begin to fall from the sky and become acid rain. Sulfuric acid rain from the Larki volcano, which erupted in 1783 in Iceland, damaged agriculture and killed half of Iceland's animals. The ensuing famine claimed the lives of a fourth of Iceland's population the next year. So picture that, but in every location. We're looking at acid rain over the next decade and Larki wasn't even a supervolcano. It's time to say farewell to civilization if all these supervolcanoes erupt because a decade-long worldwide famine is unlikely to save it. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.